Hi everyone, it's me, Bill, KC3RYS. Now for anyone who's been paying attention, recent interest in ham radio has really gone through the roof. Now this is great news for those of us in the hobby who have been worried about waning interest. And for anyone who's interested in getting into the hobby, it can be daunting. So I wanted to make this video today to sort of demystify the process and to help new people along and to encourage you to pursue your interest in joining in the fun. So let's get into it. First, let me answer the number one question people ask when talking about ham radio. How far can I transmit? It's a good question. The answer is if you're just getting into it, not very far, maybe just a few miles. This comes down to the level of licensure that you get. With an entry level license, like a technician class, you're very limited on what frequencies you can use and how powerful your radio can be. So you are limited to maybe a couple of miles. And with more advanced licensure, you can get a more powerful radio and literally transmit around the world. But I'm not gonna get into that with this video. Right off the top, I'll give you the best advice, which is conventional wisdom. If you're really interested in getting into the hobby, these are the three best things that you can do. Number one, search for repeaters in your area. If you're unsure what a repeater is, then here's a link to another one of my videos which explains what a repeater is. But briefly, a repeater is a device that will receive your transmission from your radio and retransmit it at a much higher wattage to a much greater area. So it allows you to use a radio with a short transmission range and increase it to possibly as much as 50 miles or more or less. Now very often the repeater is associated with a club and joining a club is a great idea. The second thing to do is do an internet search for clubs in your area. So if you didn't find a repeater, don't lose hope. There still might be clubs in the area that you could join. Most clubs encourage new people to come in and you don't need to be licensed in order to attend a meeting or even join the club itself. And once you're at the club, I'm sure you will find a person who is willing to take you under their wing, explain things to you in greater detail and start you down the road to fun. Clubs usually have scheduled in-person meetings and often have on-air meetings as well. These on-air meetings are referred to as a net. And often it takes the form of someone controls the net, says, is there anybody out there? People call in with their call sign, they write it down, and they move on to the next person. Some nets, they encourage conversation. Some nets have questions to answer or uh, just fun things to do. Usually like a trivia question. And with some inexpensive equipment, you can tune into the net as well as any other traffic on the repeater. You don't need a license to listen in, so you can start your fun right away. The third thing you might want to consider is just go ahead and buy yourself an inexpensive radio. Ham radio equipment can be very expensive. In the past few years, however, several inexpensive ham radios have come onto the market. These radios are actually credited with a new influx of interest in ham radio. Of course, by lowering the barrier of entry, of the expensive equipment. One company, Balfang, quickly cornered the market with their UV5R radio. I've spoken about the UV5R several times in other videos and there will be links around if you want to see those. This radio comes equipped with everything you need to start into the hobby. And it comes at a price, US, about $30 with all the features that you would find in more expensive radios. Quality may not be quite as great, but it's a very good radio. It's a good start. And if you decide to move on and get a better radio, or you decide that you don't want to get into ham, the radio is still a good radio for listening to FM broadcasts, like your local news or radio stations. It can also be used as a weather radio using the NOAA weather stations. And in some areas, it can be used to monitor police and or fire traffic. So there's a lot of good functionality in this $30 radio. I'll post affiliate links to several different Balfang radios as well as packages with better antennas and such and such down below. Selecting those links helps the channel and I really appreciate it if you do that. Thank you. So let's get into some details. What is amateur radio or ham radio? Amateur radio is a hobby which can be used as community service that combines people, electronics, communication. People can use ham radio to talk locally or to talk around the world and even communicate into space. It's an interesting and educational hobby that encourages socialization and experimentation. In the US, there are three levels of amateur radio license. The first is technician's class. The next up is general class, and then there is an amateur extra class. And each level requires passing a test. The technician level is the first license that you would get. 
you need to pass a 35 question test with at least a 74 or 26 correct answers. The 35 questions come from a pool of about 400 questions. And here's the thing, all 400 questions are available online. I'll post a link down below to where you can find the questions. You can study the questions and pass the test. And I think right around here, you'll find a link to a video I did explaining how to study for the test and how to pass the test. The frequencies available to a technician class licensure provides the user with limited access to multiple bands. Bands refer to brackets of frequencies. Sometimes these bands are referred to in lengths, like for instance, two meter or 70 centimeter. Other times they'll be referred to as UHF or VHF. The general rule is you take your frequency, divide it into the number 300, and that'll give you your, length, your wavelength. One of the ranges of frequencies available to a US technician class operator is very high frequency, VHF, which is 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. Now, if you divide the speed of light, which is approximately 300 million meters per second, by the frequency, 145, which is right in the middle of the band, then you'll get the length of the radio wave coming from your antenna. 300 divided by 145 is about 2.069 or two meters. Another range available to the technician class is UHF or ultra high frequency from about 420 to 450 megahertz. Again, if you divide the speed of light, 300 million or just 300 by 430, which is right there in the middle, it comes to about 0.68 of a meter or 70 centimeters. As a new operator, you will likely not use HF frequencies. You'll probably mostly use UHF and VHF. In the most ideal of conditions, you may be able to transmit 100 miles, but I wouldn't count on it. That would be if you had the most ideal terrain, altitude, antennas, and everything else. VHF and UHF are what's called line of sight, meaning if my radio can't see your radio, we can't talk to each other. Now, radio waves will go through buildings and, and things of that nature, but keep in mind, if it has to go through a building, it's going to come out dimmer on the other end and you'll be less likely to hear it. Practically speaking, your handheld radio will maybe get one to two miles, three if you're lucky, but believe it or not, your handheld UHF, VHF radio can go about 100 miles or so and hit the International Space Station. It's been done. Folks using a, a handheld radio can transmit it's like 100, 120 miles straight up into space. You go straight through the ionosphere and you may, if you're lucky, get in touch with the ISS. More likely, if you're lucky, there's a school interacting with the ISS and maybe you can pick up that transmission. So what's a good starter radio? Well, your radio is a very personal thing and there are several inexpensive options out there. Like I said, I started with the Baofeng. I'm not associated with Baofeng, so pick whatever you like. But their family of radios, the UV5R and its variants, are very good, very well known. And like I said, a lot of people got into the hobby because of that radio. And also, like I said, you can't really go wrong. $30 US, if you don't like it, use it for something else. You can use it as a paperweight. Now, my first big boy radio was the TYT9800. I'm not associated with TYT, although I will put an affiliate link down below. And as I said before, if you select that, the channel does get a little something back, so thank you. The TYT9800 is a quad band 50 watt radio. It served me well. I get good sound out of it. It gets good transmission distances, so maybe it's something you want to look at. Something to keep in mind when you buy your big boy radio is it does not come with a power supply usually. So right here I have my power supply. It's an Elanco DM33MV, whatever that stands for. Again, I'll put an affiliate link down below. It served me well. It can actually run several radios at one time. So it's a pretty good model, I think. And I have my radio attached to a Diamond X50 antenna. Again, standard equipment. This is all sort of like the baseline Honda Accord, if you will, of equipment. It's a good place to start unless you have an unlimited budget, and then you're probably not even watching this channel. If you watch this far into the video, I really appreciate your watching. I hope you'll think about linking and subscribing and ding in that little bell over there. Thanks for watching. Good luck and have fun. Clubs often have monthly or 
Clubs often have uh, frequent meetings, maybe monthly, maybe weekly, maybe yearly. Clubs usually have scheduled meetings. <laughs> Demystified. <laughs>